Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, welcome to the Mitsui Lecture Series. Today's session is titled Moving Beyond BNA Vision, focused on a new horizon at Nashville International Airport. I'm Sammy Arnold. I am the executive director elect of the Japan American Society of Tennessee, and uh, we're so happy you've been able to join us today. The Mitsui Lecture Series is made possible by the generous support of the Mitsui USA Foundation. These lectures align with JAST's efforts to deliver thought-provoking programming on topics of interest to the Japanese and non-Japanese speaking business communities in Tennessee. With us from Mitsui today is Mike Fidelli, Vice President. Mike is the General Manager for the Trade Service Center and Regional Officer of the Nashville Office of Mitsui & Co. USA. Mike also serves as our JAST Treasurer and uh, it is my pleasure to introduce my friend Mike. Mike, take it away, sir. Thank you so much, Sammy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm honored to represent Mitsui and JAST uh, this afternoon for the Mitsui Lecture Series. In the event some of you may not be familiar with Mitsui and what we do, allow me a little uh, time for some background about us and the foundation. Mitsui and Co, headquartered in Tokyo, is one of the largest Japanese trading and investment companies in the world. Mitsui's business is focused on growth through traditional uh, trading and investment, uh, business investment and management and project development. Its diversified business portfolio spans 63 countries and regions with over 500 affiliated companies, including over 46,000 employees within 128 offices. Total worldwide Revenue as of March 31, 2023 was 106.8 billion uh, US dollars. Mitsui USA, established in 1966, is one of the largest wholly owned subsidiaries of Mitsui and Co. and operates in the following 10 business areas, mineral and metal resources, infrastructure projects, mobility, chemicals, foods, uh, and retail, healthcare, and service business, IT, financial and new business, transportation, logistics, and steel and metals. It op its operations are guided by its distinctive corporate social responsibility policy, which emphasizes environmental and social accountability and respect for stakeholders and the community. The Mitsui USA Foundation is the philanthropic arm of Mitsui USA for active social contribution programs in communities where Mitsui does business. It was established in 1987 and it currently supports more than 50 initiatives across the United States in the areas of education, community welfare, arts and culture, and employee matching and volunteerism with special emphasis on international education and US-Japan exchanges. More than 50% of its grants target education primarily for college level scholarships, forums, and Japan research. With respect to JAST events, the Japan America Society of Tennessee events, Mitsui USA Corporate supports the Nashville Cherry Blossom Festival, the Women's Leadership Forum and Networking Luncheon, while Mitsui USA Foundation founded and supports the Mitsui USA Foundation Scholarships in Tennessee program and contributes generously to regional programs, including the Nashville Cherry Blossom Festival, the Tennessee Video and Skit Poster Presentation Contest, the Women's Leadership Forum and Networking Luncheon, the Memphis Japan Festival, and the Mitsui Lecture Series, which brings us to this afternoon's event. The Mitsui Lecture Series objective now in its third year, thanks to the generous support of the Mitsui USA Foundation, is to deepen the understanding of contemporary Japan and Tennessee and create a sense of community and exchange. I can't think of a better way to represent this sense of community and exchange than this afternoon's event with Stacy Nickens learning more about a new horizon at our Nashville International Airport. Thank you and back to you, Sammy. Great, Mike, thank you. Thanks so much to you, um, to Mitsui and Co and to the Mitsui USA Foundation for your amazing support of JAST in all of our programs. Um, very grateful to you and your great company, sir. 
Um, before I turn it over to our board chair, Masami Tyson, to introduce our fantastic guest, Stacy Nickens, today, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, first of all, to ask Stacy a question, please just look at the bottom of your Zoom screen there for the Q&A button on the toolbar. And uh, if you'd like to ask a question, just click on this button and, and, and type in your question and submit that. And Stacy will be able to answer that question at the, at the end of her presentation. And please do ask questions, by the way. We'd love for this to be interactive. Um, I'll also note this program will be recorded and is going to be available on the JAST YouTube channel, uh, which we'd love for everybody to check out. By the way, there's some terrific content on there. And now it is my pleasure to introduce JAST board chair, Masami Tyson. Masami is a partner at Womble Bond Dickinson and a commissioner of the Nashville International Airport. Masami, take it away. Thank you, Sammy. And um, hello, everybody. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to be with you today. And just want to reiterate uh, how much Jess appreciates Mitsui uh, and all the programs that it supports, uh, including this one today. And this has already been said, but what better topic is there than to discuss the airport, uh, which, by the way, is the way that physically connects Japan and here, uh, Tennessee. So um, again, it is my uh, honor to welcome you, uh, everyone who's tuning in today, and also my honor to welcome Stacy Nickens. Um, we are very grateful to Stacy for taking time out of her very busy schedule. Uh, to discuss and share with us the exciting growth at Nashville International Airport and how this transformation will impact domestic and international air service, hopefully to Japan, uh, maybe even direct, right? Hint, hint. So Stacey Nickens, just a little bit about her. She is the Vice President of Corporate Communications and Marketing at Nashville International Airport, or BNA as we know it. And she serves as the spokesperson for BNA and is responsible for the organization's internal and external communication strategies, including community relations, advertising, events, customer experience, and BNA's arts at the airport program, which includes both visual and visual art and music. Uh, while having a lasting impact on BNA is top of mind for Stacy, she is also heavily involved in the Nashville community in general. As someone who deeply values relationships, Stacy is heavily involved in the local community and she serves on numerous boards. Stacy earned a bachelor's degree in public relations from the University of Tennessee at Martin, and she is married to her husband, Bryant, and they have one son, BJ. Now I will turn it over to Stacy. Stacy. Hi, well, good afternoon, everyone. I am very excited to be here. I won't take up too much time. Thank you, um, Commissioner Masami, who is on the board here at the Nashville International Airport. So I want to start off talking about the impact of all the Tennessee airports in Tennessee as a whole. They make up 20.6 20, 20 billion dollars for the state of Tennessee but specifically as it relates to Nashville International Airport and our sister airport, we generate 10 billion of those dollars that make up the state. So that just lets you know the impact that Nashville International Airport has as well as John C. Toon. Just taking a look back at 1937 when we opened the doors of Nashville International Airport, we started off with 189,000 passengers, only two airlines and one run runway. Today, things have changed. There's 21.4 million on here, but we're actually at 21.9 million, 20 airlines and four runways. So that just paints the picture of the growth that you see unfolding at BNA. Here at an airport, what we do is we have master plans that we work with consultants to kind of help with some of our projections and some of the expectations of what we can expect to see over a 10 year period. All of our master plans have been under because we have surpassed all of those numbers, um, including our, our pre-pandemic year. You see, we were at 17.2 and then we had our pandemic year um, 2020, we were at 13.7. 
which brings us to today, we're at 21.9 million passengers. So we have approximately 60,000 people coming through the doors of BNA daily. Where are our passengers coming from? So this is a breakdown of where most of our passengers, what we call originating, where are they coming from? You will see the bulk of our passengers, of course, are coming from Tennessee, but we also have a breakdown by county. Um, you will notice that um, Davison, we have quite a few people coming Emma. Kentucky, Georgia, and Mississippi. So you can see the numbers of where our passengers are originating from. Where are we as it relates to our destinations? Today, we have 99 nonstop destinations to BNA. We are the largest commercial airport in the state of Tennessee and the 27th largest in the U.S. Coming out of COVID, COVID we are the number one passenger recovery airport. And we're pretty proud of that because COVID was a tough time. A lot of things that we did know, a lot of unpredictable states within the aviation industry. And to come out of that at the top really, really makes us completely happy. Um, we have 90, um, 19 passenger um we, we have 19 passenger airlines. Um, we have four cargo. And so what that means, the four. The 19 passengers, just our commercial airlines and our far, four cargo is the shipments that come in and out from FedEx to Amazon, DHgate, and some of those other um, companies that come in and out of the airport. So at the start of 2017, we launched a program that many of you have come to know over the last six years known as BNA Vision. We are concluding that part of our construction program the end of December with the opening of the hotel. But what BNA Vision included was two new, excuse me, three new um, terminal garages, a new Concourse D, an updated terminal wing, expanded lobby, that's our new international arrivals facility, um, an airport administrative building, and what you will see coming as a part of New Horizon, which is our new program, will be the expansion of Concourse A, the expansion of Concourse D, and the roadway um, is a little bit of being a vision and New Horizon, but the relocation of Donaldson Pike. And we are working with our partners with TDOT to get that project complete. We are very excited about our new terminal, our first ever um, hotel, the BNA Hilton. Um, we will have 292 rooms. There will be six suites. There will be a, uh, on top of the hotel, there will be a lounge and a pool. And we're pretty excited about it. And I tell people all the time when I'm traveling, I typically avoid the hotel that is at the terminal, but I don't think we'll have that problem because what you'll see here um, with people who probably do the same thing that I do, what you will see is that people will be really excited about this hotel because it looks and feels just like the boutique hotels that you see in the city. So I, I talked a little bit about New Horizon. Um, at the end of New Horizon, I'm gonna take a deeper dive and show you a few other slides. Right now we're at 43 gates. At the end of being a vision, we have a couple more things to go. We open our satellite concourse, which is a part of it. And I'll show you those pictures. We will go to 54 gates, and at the end of New Horizon, we will go to 69 gates. Again, that's to keep up with all of the uh, heavy passenger demand that we see come through BNA. This you will see here. This is actually a um, sketch of what our extended Concourse D will look like. It started in 2022 and it will be complete in 2025. So here, this is the new um, this is the new extension of our Southwest Concourse, and these will all be Southwest flights as well. 
Here you will see the extension of Concourse A. Um, it'll be a total of 16 gates. This will take a little longer for us to complete because we have to get the land up to level around the sides of, if you come off of 40, you'll see that big drop. We have to get the land up to level to build out the apron so that the planes are able to taxi in. So this will be complete in 2028. And this is really exciting for us because if you come through the airport now, you probably don't come to this area as much. But if you do come to this area, it has the old look and feel of the old BNA. So we're excited to see this project unfold. And so once Concourse D is extended, we will shut down A and start the construction there. I want to talk to you about what some of our plans are as it relates to international travel. Um, our air service development team, they are all on it to bring us the best flights, but a way that they look at it is the international investment in Tennessee because that helps guide how we're able to fill up the planes to justify the service that's needed for BNA. So some of our top things, you see the, the green check mark, all the Canadian flights, we have those. Latin America, we have these. As far as the Europe part, we have British Airways. We are heavily leaning towards seeking in conversations to get a Frankfurt flight as well as, well as Ireland. The reason that these are really top of mind in addition to the investment being made in Tennessee, is that these do not require a longer runway. We can use our existing infrastructure to have these flights to begin air service for these flights. If the airlines and TSA and all the other um, parties agree as well. Our long-term, and I do mean long-term, but a priority is our Asian flight. This is a big push for us. However, with this flight, and I'll show you additional slides, we would need a longer runway, but we know that it's possible because we know there's several Japanese companies that are invested in Tennessee, and we don't see that going anywhere. And we want to have the air service available to get more people in and out of Nashville with a direct flight. So I'll show you a few other slides. Here you will see the west side and you will see the east side. So the east side is London, Dublin, Paris. These are all the places that we can get to now without a longer runway. Over to our left, which is the west side, those are the areas that will require a longer runway. However, if we get you to Honolulu, you see that we can get you straight to Tokyo, as well as Sydney. These are areas that we can get you to quite fast if we had a flight, a direct flight to Honolulu. So that's in the works as well. Here you'll just see um, if we were able to get it, here are the few airlines that we will be in continuous conversation with because we know we have the infrastructure in place. And so these are some of the conversations that are being had now specifically with um, Ireland as well as Frankfurt. Our long-term plans, but it's definitely a priority, is our flight to Asia. But we are in conversations now with Hawaiian Air to see if we can get a a direct flight from Nashville um, that will take you to these two places so you don't have to connect on multiple flights, just one flight from Nashville. So I want to talk to you about some of the things that are unfolding at our sister airport, John C. Toon. March 3rd, 2020, we, um, our airport, was part of the devastation uh, impacts as a result of the tornado that hit Nashville. We had to rebuild. As a part of that, we launched a campaign titled Tune Taking Off. As a part of that campaign, we were able to com complete the investment dollars that were made of 38.5 million to get new hangars, tie downs, pavement, as well as a new air traffic control tower. 
In addition to that, the governor's hangar, which used to be housed here at BNA, is now housed at our John C. Toon facility, which gives us more aeronautical use for BNA here at the airport. And it gives the governor a direct way to get in and out with all, without all of the traffic here at Nashville International Airport. A lot of people ask all the time, how are you all communicating your messages to keep the public informed? Here are a few ways that we're helping to keep um, the public informed. I know you see these here, but I want to just talk about just a few of them that are uh, particularly different. With the media, it's, it's more than us sending out a press release to the media. We invite the media in. They uh, actually call us and say we want to broadcast live. And we welcome them through our doors because it allows us to tell the story, whether it's traffic, whether some great things that are unfolding, new projects, new art, new concessions, um, anything that we need to tell them. If they're in our doors, it gives us an opportunity to convey our message and own the narrative that we want to take place. Most recently, we launched a text message service. This, is, this has come out of the need to really keep passengers up to speed on things as they unfold at BNA. So we have invited the public to sign up at flynashville.com to receive real-time updates on things from traffic, weather, or roadways to avoid to ensure that you have a seamless journey. The other piece to that is that we want you to use a sale lot if you're waiting on a friend or family member to arrive. So we put a lot of this information in that tech service. And lastly, on top of all the other things that I didn't go over here, our, air, our um, employees and airport partners are our greatest ambassadors. So I didn't hit on social media on the other slide because I knew I had it here. This is just a snapshot view of the things that we cover on social media, from promoting our work in the community, our 5K on the runway, to you know, high winds. And we have um, where the FAA um, calls for all planes to be landed. We keep our passengers informed so that they're in the loop the entire time. And we encourage them to please check the website to track your flight to make sure that you're a departure times are still the same. We also do a lot of posts about our sale lot, as well as some of our highlights of our grand lobby opening. Here's just a snapshot of some other things that we promote using traditional so social media. And this is, we like to this type of media, but we also know that sometimes we are faced with dealing with crisis situations. Not all things um, are, are great things, but Either way, we are very intentional about making sure we keep the public informed. I want to talk about our community affairs and our role in the community because we know that there are passengers coming through. We know all the great things with the construction taking place. As a part of that, we are committed to the Nashville community. We have supported the Cherry Blossom Festival for over 10 years. And here you can see this check being presented here on stage. And we're looking forward to doing this again in April. But we also um, pay tribute to our veterans um, when they come through the doors of BNA. And this is an honor flight where they take um, veterans to the war memorials in DC. And we have a huge celebration for them um, as they come in and we welcome them through the doors of BNA. But we also invite other agencies and advocacy groups to come in, such as the Borderless Arts of Tennessee. And here you see a gentleman playing on stage and we help promote that so that our organizations in the community get the um, publicity to really elevate their message in Middle Tennessee and beyond. I want to share um, a little bit about our art. If you've been in the airport, or you've seen this unbelievable ramparts of time, this was a really intentional piece to put in the airport. This was selected um, on many other as the top one among many other um, pieces in the airport. But if you notice, there are cloud-like structures that fall 
And at the bottom, you see the colors of Tennessee from the Greenlands to the waters and all these different patterns that represent different aspects of Tennessee. In addition to that piece, this was also a piece that was selected. This is um, one of our green walls, and this is a replica um, of the Korean Veterans Bridge. And as you can see, this is made with dried flowers. And we were really intentional about making sure all elements of the airport, not just represent Nashville, but all of Tennessee. Here, this was our grand opening um, of our lobby on January 24th of this year. And you can see this lady in awe of the beautiful sculpture as she comes through the doors. But here, this is our new um, security lane. So if you have traveled any time within the last three years, you know that we had two separate um, areas, our north and south check-in with eight lanes only on both sides. We've gone from eight lanes to 24 lanes. And when you come through our security area, you see these multimedia screens that are above the area. All of that was curated with the passenger in mind to give you the best first and last impression of Tennessee. So you'll think you'll see images of nature journeys, such as the ones you see here. You'll also see drone footage of Nashville, Broadway. I mean, you name it, we have it. We even have a whimsical depiction of whiskey making, guitar making. We wanted to be sure we encapsulated every aspect of Nashville and Tennessee. Here, this is a great photo here because this is celebrating our new inter the opening of our new international arrivals facility. And this is our, a picture of our current board members as well as former board members cutting the ribbon to this space. This event took place September 26th of this year. Here's this new area where you can see some of our holding areas and our tea gates. You see how the glass walls overlook the airfield. This is the new experience that you will get when you come through the doors of the airport. We also have various concessions um, that provide food, food as well as retail in this area. Once you get off the plane from your flight, this is our new customs area. Above the customs area, you see this beautiful photo that says, welcome to Nashville. Again, as the best first and last impression of the city, we want every element to feel like you're somewhere special because we believe Middle Tennessee is a special place. This is also a mural that will greet you in our new international arrivals facility. And this mural really captures everything that you can see in Music City from music to our hot chicken, to the, the neons on Broadway, to the 4th of July celebration. Every aspect you can think of, we try to capture right here. A replica of a hatch print because we know hatch prints are a very popular brand here in, um, in Nashville. This is by far one of my favorite parts of the airport. This new area is the tunnel that you will exit out of once you get off an international flight. All of these elements, there are 114 photographs that capture every element you can think of from of music in Middle Tennessee, from the Tennessee State Band to Blake Shelton to Johnny Cash, you name it, they're on the walls through this beautiful tunnel. It's, um, again, 114. 14 photographs, and it captures any and everything you can think of related to music in our city. And lastly, this is the newest piece that we're most excited about. This is our new eight gate satellite concourse. It is a standalone concourse. Um, that is a three minute bus ride. We have buses that get you there to this facility from our main terminal through gate C4, and it takes you directly over here. This new satellite concourse captures the exact same elements that you will see and feel in the main terminal. It's just in a different facility. The airlines that operate out of there are Spirit and Allegiant. And again, this was needed to meet that growing 
passenger demand, as well as the airlines demand to offer more domestic flights here. And I am about done here, but I am so happy to take any questions that you all may have. Stacy, thank you so much. That's fantastic. Uh, you guys have so much going on. Unbelievable. Um, and I know uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of our team on the community uh, support piece, thank you for the support of the Cherry Blossom Festival and everything you guys are doing in support of our organization. We're so thankful and appreciative of you guys. Um, and I know a lot of ears perked up on the international slides <laughs> to this particular audience. So thanks for including um, including that. And uh, I'll just remind everybody, this is uh, this would be a great time if you have a question, anything you want, Stacy, to elaborate on that Q and A um, button down there at the bottom on, um, on your screen of the tool toolbar. You can just type in a question there, and we'll be glad to take that. Stacy, we've already got one that's popped up here, mm -hmm. and I'll go ahead and, and mention that to you from Ann Wadi. Um, yes. We're wondering who the potential carrier, if you're allowed to say, um, on the yes. flight to Paris. Air France and Delta. Air France and Delta. Fantastic. Yes. Perfect. Great question. And, okay, good. Everybody else, uh, feel free to chime in. I know I've got a, a couple here uh, from, from my team and I. I know that, uh, first of all, <laughs> with the growth that you guys are experiencing, um, as well as the whole, the whole city, that comes with additional traffic. We get it. That's part of the deal. Uh, here living yes. in Nashville. Um, and I know there's been some news coverage and stuff about the increasing traffic for the passenger drop off area uh, coming to the airport. I know you guys are aware of that in, in working on that. I wonder if you just comment on kind of some of the stuff the airport's doing to mitigate that. Yes. Yeah, so we have several things that we're working on. So I'll tell you the, the, the big thing that we're doing now to really assist with some of that. I mentioned the text message service. That's one of the ways that we're notifying our passengers to give them alternate routes to BNA. So many of our travelers come straight to our first exit, which is 216A. We are encouraging passengers to use 216B as well as Mur Murfreesboro Pike because you can still get here and it's not as much traffic to get to the terminal. It's just everybody's coming through at the same time and it's creating a backup on 40. We're also, we're also encouraging um, travelers that if you're picking someone up, feel free to use that cell lot. We have real-time screens and security in our cell lot at 1415 Murfreesboro Pike, again, to really help get people off the roadways and to get them to their loved one so they can get in the car in a timely um, fashion and sit more seamless journey at the airport. Great. Fantastic. Um, thanks, Ann, for that question. Um, one from one from me, and this is sort of maybe a compliment disguised as a question. One of my favorite things about our airport that you guys have done is partnered with so many of our local brands for retail and for restaurant. And I'm just thinking, I know Tootsie's, Hattie B's, Arrington Vineyards, and then probably like two dozen more. I don't I don't see that type of effort going on when I visit other airports. And I think it's awesome how you guys do that. I'm sure that's been intentional. Can yeah. you kind of tell us how that's come about? Absolutely. That's a great question. So at the start of being a vision, there was a, a huge effort and push to bring local brands that you see in the city through the doors of BNA. And so what we call it is our new reimagined concessions program. And Fratport was hired to manage this process. But as a part of it, they were encouraged to go to the Hattie B's, Slim and Huskies, um, Parnassus Books, some of the companies that you're used to seeing, Pharmacy Burger, to come through the doors because a lot of times people just don't know the opportunity opportunities that are available. Once they found out, they were eager to jump on board. And that's why you see so many now, like the Southern and so many brands that we become familiar with in the city, in the doors of the airport. It's great. It's awesome. And you guys are doing so great. And we're so proud of all those places. And so we love seeing them highlighted. Um, Masami, um, our, our board chair and, and commissioner of the airport, she sent me a message that she wanted me to relay to the audience. 
Masami is sorry to be overexcited about the potential Japan direct flight. <laughs> the, the important thing is that BNA is on it and diligently working towards that, whether it is receiving approval for and conducting environmental studies to talking to yep. Japanese airlines in the meantime to get ourselves on the radar. We're all excited about this coming to fruition in the future. So she just wanted to let our audience know that. And she brought up a very good point because I will tell you that is top of mind. It's just getting, like she mentioned, the environmental um, studies that are underway um, now that we got approval for. Those are the first steps towards reaching that goal. Perfect. And um, another question in our in my private chat here, wanted to had some someone curious about airline clubs. Are there additional airline clubs that are that are coming online and opening? So we have that option available. When you come through our new marketplace, you will see a mezzanine level. Right now, that space is left empty for future interest in um, whether it's American Express Club. Um, or an airline club, we have the space available for them to take over. Fantastic. So the short answer is yes, that's, that's a goal. <laughs> yeah, 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 good. Okay, perfect. Um, one more sort of from me that I, again, another kind of compliment disguised as a question. Um, it seems like you guys have done a good job. The last time I was coming through the airport uh, was on a Saturday and I'm a big football fan. And so I was looking for TVs. The Tennessee game was on a couple of other games. You guys have done well with the TVs with a lot of comfortable seating uh, for people uh -huh. being able to kind of hang out and, and sort of enjoy their weight in the airport in a comfortable and almost luxurious type situation. And I wonder how you balance the logistical efficiency, just kind of getting customers in and out piece with that that comfort piece for the people who are waiting in the airport. Yes, so we take in a lot of surveys and we, we have a quarterly survey and it came up before the need for us to have more seating. Um, as far as the screens that you see, a lot of the retail concepts have added that, such as our new Titans bar. They have a massive screen yes. on the side of their place. But we received feedback that more seating was needed, and that's why you see that now. And it's not necessarily seating that you see waiting on someone to come from baggage claim, but seating in some of the areas you have more of the, um, the shops, the, the concessions. People want to be in the know, right? They don't want to be far off from where things are happening. And so if you come in our marketplace, that's all you'll see in the center is seating. And that was intentional. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and uh, another follow-up here from, from Ann in the um, Q&A. She says it's interesting to her that the Ireland flight is ahead of what we would think were other more economically profitable destinations. And wonder if you'd elaborate on that. I will tell you, Ann, we've received a lot of feedback recently and a lot of interest from the Ireland airline, and that's why that has moved up. But I tell you, there's so many different factors. We have to show the low factor is there as well. Um, but we have interest, but the other pieces that to that is the low factor, meaning interest from the public. So all those pieces have to play together. But so far, there has been lots of interest. Great. Um, one more question uh, in, in my private chat here. Uh, obviously, it's similar to the traffic question with the growth that you guys are experiencing, parking is obviously going to be a corollary to dramatic growth. Um, what is what is the airport doing to, to resolve that? Okay, so in maybe like a week, you will hear some of the things that are coming out. But I will just give you just a sneak peek if you all keep it <laughs> with us. Perfect. We are looking to do, <laughs> we are looking to open up short term parking. And what that means is that if you're coming to wait on someone and you were going to be here two, three hours or less, it wouldn't cost you more than about 20 bucks, 10, 10 to 15 bucks to wait on them versus sitting at the curbside or circling the lot. So we're hoping that that will help. But um, the big project that we're working on which will take time, it will come with challenges, is we're expanding our roadway from three lanes to six lanes. In order to do that, Donaldson Pike will be shifted over. 
that is one of the, the projects that we're working on like in the coming year or so to, to get started on. But if you think about the airport, like all the infrastructure from the physical side of the buildings have changed. But the one thing that's remained the same is the rollway. And we've had triple the volume of people. So that's where we see a lot of, of the congestion coming in. We just have a lot of people of, at one time on our existing runways that, you know, just it's just not capable of, of you know, managing during our peak periods. Right. But it is our goal to get some of that resolved ASAP. We are conscious of, <laughs> of the issues that are taking place and we're working hard to come up with uh, solutions to solve that. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Stacey. Um, one, one more here I've got in my, my chat is, um, Tell us more about the nice area with trees and benches, uh, we think, on the garage level five at the entrance to the terminal. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's right outside our office. So um, that's our new plaza. So I tell all my friends, and I feel like we're friends today, park on level five when you come to the airport of garage one. It is a straight path directly into the airport. And what I mean by that, if you wanted to come and have a seat in our plaza, you could sit there before boarding your flight. And if you're traveling with a pet or a, serv you know, a service animal, there's a dog park in that area as well. It's really to make people relax because traveling can be stressful for a lot of people. And this is just a stress-free way before you get on the flight um, right. to enjoy yourselves. And the hotel is in that plaza, plaza as well. Great. Well, that's a, we didn't know we were going to get an insider tip here today for those of us who are in park on level five for the straight shot into the, into the terminal there. Um, that is great. I do not, well, actually, hang on. Let's see more. From, perfect. Yeah, with, from Brandy Moore. Um, with these expansion projects, are these providing an increase in the job market for economic growth? Absolutely. And I will tell you, um, if you follow us on our uh, Fly Nashville and our concession and where you bid for jobs, you can see the different companies that have won the bids and you can seek opportunities through them, through our website. There is a direct link that will get you to them. We have lots of job opportunities here at the airport. Now that's through all of the growth, but as an authority, we have opportunities that are available right now at flynashville.com. But specifically as it relates to expansion from Hensel Phelps and some of the other companies that have big bids holder, they're always looking for opportunities to um, hire people to assist with the project. And you can get to that on our website as well. Terrific. Um, Stacey, would you, tell, would you mind telling us uh, what is the BNA Passport? Yes. So the BNA Passport, um, we're scheduled to launch hopefully by the end of this year. It will give you an opportunity to come through the airport without having a boarding pass. So if you want to just come out one Saturday, shop and eat and look around, you will have the opportunity to do so. What you will do, you will go through, um, we will have a portal. You have to be pre-approved and screened by TSA and receive approval prior to coming here. Because when you check in, you will still have to go through security, but you will have a, a BNA passport to get through that area that shows that you were approved. Well, what a fantastic idea. Uh, sounds like- Coming take soon. It <laughs> yes, coming so. Um, well, that is fantastic. Um, Stacey, I do not see any additional questions at the moment. And uh, you've given us so much uh, information here. This has been incredible. Um, so I would just want to thank you for that, that great presentation. I want to thank Masami and Mike um, and everybody in the audience here for joining us today. Um, and once again, I want to just mention how grateful we are to the Mitsui USA Foundation for um, allowing this to happen, this, this great series. Um, the lecture series will return after the first of the year, and we'd love for everybody to continue to tune in and, and join us for those. Thank you all, and um, I hope you have a great afternoon. We'll end right here. Thanks again, Thank Stacey. you. Thanks again.